Hi guys, so today I'm going to be going over chapter 12, um, the chapter on absorption and stripping, and to sort of go over it, I'm going to be doing problem D4 in the textbook. So in this problem, we're given that we have a steam stripper. So what that means is the goal of the system is we want to remove some contaminant from the water or the liquid coming in. And I've drawn this diagram for you, so just so you have a little overview of what's going on. You have a liquid coming in with some initial composition, and then the liquid coming out of the bottom here with a new composition. Same thing vapor, vapor actually comes in the bottom here and then leaves the top again with some initial composition and inside, much like a distillation column, we have many different stages where um, the compositions are moving from the liquid to the vapor stream. Okay, so in this question we're given that we have the same temperatures, we're given the entering composition, as well as the flow rate, we're given the L over V. So this is the equilibrium line. So in this case, the equilibrium line is actually linear, and you're not going to need to take data from the table like you would for a lot of other distillation columns. Um, I'm going to make two assumptions in order to be able to solve this problem. So the first assumption we're going to make is that we're going to assume constant flow rates. So what this means is that the V here and the V here are going to be equal and the L here and the L here are going to be equal. And we can actually make this assumption because as you can see it's a very, very dilute system with small composition. So that means that um, this component moving from the liquid to the vapor or the other way around isn't really going to change the overall flow rate. Um, another assumption we're going to make is that the entering um, steam or the vapor coming in is pure or that Y n plus 1 is equal to 0. Um, just because that wasn't particularly specified anywhere, but it's a safe assumption to make because we know it is a steam stripper, so we can assume, or we would like the steam coming in to be pure. Okay, so the first question asks us to find the value of Y1, and um, we're going to be able to do this by deriving our operating line for this system. So, like we always do, our operating line is just going to be um, a mass balance, and for this case, we're going to do it just around the entire system. Okay, so what that looks like is LX0 plus VYN plus 1. So that's what's going in is going to equal what's going out. So that's VY1 plus LXN. And since we're given the L over V, um, we can do we can solve for Y1 one of two ways. We can find V, or we can put this into the form of our operating line. Um, and since we're going to need the operating line later to find the total number of stages, stages, we might as well just do that now. So if we divide everything by V, we get L over V x naught plus Y n plus one equals Y1 plus L over V x n. Um, since one of our assumptions is that y n plus 1 equals 0, we can just cross that off and we can just rearrange this um, to get it into a useful form for us. So we're going to get y1 equals L over V x0 minus xn. Or to get the operating line equation form, we'll just plug in the numbers that we know. So equals 12 x minus and then the composition of xn that was given. Okay, so if you just plug in your known values, you're going to get that y1 equals 0.00228. Okay, so like I said, this is a dilute system, so it should be a really small number, and it kind of just confirms that our assumption of constant flow rates was okay for this case. Okay, so to find the number of stages, you're going to do a McCabe Thiel diagram just like you do for a distillation column. The only difference is that now it's going to be um, two straight lines as opposed to a curvy equilibrium line. So because we're doing um, a steam stripper here, your equilibrium line is going to actually be on top. So when you plot it, you'll see that it's going to look like this. So you're going to have your equilibrium line here and you're going to have your operating line down here. Um, the two most important points you need to plot your operating line in this case are going to be, I'll write it over here, your xn comma yn plus 1 and your x0 y1. 
and if you just use these two points to construct the line, or you can also do it using this equation. You have both, but I find it's usually easier just to connect two known points on a graph. Um, you'll be able to set this up, and you're going to find that you need um, three stages to get what you need. I'm going to flash a picture um, right now of what I did. Okay, so as you saw from the graph I just showed, you're able to get three stages graphically using the mccabe pleal method. Um, keep in mind, sometimes your equilibrium line might be below your operating line for a slightly different system, but you're still going to be able to do the same thing as you usually do, just counting off stages so you reach your desired composition. Um, another way that you actually are able to solve a question like this is using the Kremser equation. I'm not going to show you the solution, but I will show you the equation and what a lot of things mean in it. Um, one of the requirements for the Kremser equation is that you have to have a linear equilibrium slope, which we actually do have here. Um, so you can really only use this in a system where the question tells you, hey, um, our equilibrium line has this equation with a slope. Um, so you wouldn't be able to use it when your equilibrium line looks something um, like this, like it might for a distillation column. Um, so in this equation, um, there's many different forms, and your textbook derives it in many different ways. Um, one of the forms that you can write it as is like this. So y n plus 1 minus y star n plus 1 over y1 minus y1 star equals L over V M to the N. Okay, so in this equation you have your L over V, which um, by now you should know what that means. Your M is just going to be equal to your slope of your equilibrium line here. Um, your N is the number of stages that you would usually get using the mccabe thiel method, but this time we're actually solving for it. Um, your y n plus 1 here is your vapor composition entering the column, and your y1 is your vapor composition leaving the column. Okay, so that just leaves what are y stars um, for y star n plus 1 and y1 star. So what the star just means is what is the equilibrium composition there. So y1 um, corresponds to x0. So what y1 star is, is if you were to plug x0 into this equilibrium equation, that would be equal to y1 star. So the same thing for y n plus 1 star. If you have xn and you plug it into this equilibrium equation, you get y star n plus 1. Um, and that's all that that means. There's also um, x stars that you can see. So there's many, many different forms of this equation, um, and they're all in your textbook. Um, so I would just go through and figure out which form you like to use best um, because it can be a really valuable shortcut if the question doesn't explicitly say that you have to use the McCabe-Thiel method. Okay, and I think that's it for this chapter.